Good morning and welcome to the Free Church at Hampstead Garden Suburb. Wherever you might be and at whatever time you may be watching this, you're very welcome to join us. You may live very close by to the church. You may live far away across the world. But wherever you are, you are very welcome as we together share in our act of worship to celebrate this Christmas day. Today, we recall the birth of Christ and we are called to worship by the Apostle Paul who makes this audacious claim on behalf of the one whose birth we celebrate this morning. He is the image of the invisible God. His is the primacy over all creation. In him, everything in heaven and on earth was created not only things visible, but also the invisible order of thrones, sovereignties, authorities, and powers. The whole universe has been created through him and for him. He exists before all things, and all things are held together in him. He is the head of the body, the church. He is its origin, the first to return from the dead, to become in all things supreme. For in him, God in all his fullness chose to dwell. We listen to the first of our carols, Angels from the Realms of Glory.
During the season of Advent, we've been lighting the candles on our Advent wreath. And this morning, four of the candles are already burning. But now on this Christmas day, we come to light the candle which is at the center of the wreath, what we term our Christmas candle. And Hussein is going to come and light it for us. Hussein is one of those who makes these services possible by working behind the scenes. But today you see him front of camera. And as the Christmas candle burns before us, we listen to a way in a manger. pray together. Let us all pray. Gracious, merciful and loving God, we thank you for this day, this day of celebration and thanksgiving, this day of rejoicing. We come to give you thanks, thanks for your gift to the world in Jesus, the giving of yourself coming amongst us as one of us, sharing life with us, becoming part of us, taking us to yourself, enveloping us in your love, wrapping your loving arms around us, ensuring that we are never alone, that you are always with us. We thank you for the truth of the gospel which reminds us that Jesus is for life and not just for Christmas. But we thank you too for everything else that Christmas means to each one of us. A different Christmas this year, a Christmas we have to spend more apart than together. But nevertheless, a time of enjoyment, 
and we thank you for the ingenious ways in which we are able to be in contact one with another. For advances in technology, which bring people into our living rooms, even if they are not present with us. We thank you for all that will be shared in these ways on this particular day. But most especially, we ask your blessing on what we will share here in the church and on those who will share it with us, wherever they are. We thank you for gifts and talents with which you bless your people, which can be put to good use in your service. And so it is we offer you our service, we offer you our worship, and pray your blessing upon it. And do this, we pray, for Jesus' sake. Amen. Over these past years, the church here at the Free Church, we've been blessed by having come amongst us a number of friends from Iran. We've already met Hussein, who's lit the candle for us. Hussein came to us a few years ago now and is one of our deacons and is serving the church in many ways. And we are grateful to God for the gift that comes in the form of the likes of Hussein. But there are others too for whom we are grateful. And our readings this morning are going to be given to us by two sisters, Hadis and Anis. They came to us a while ago, were introduced to the life of the church, have been baptized here, have become members, and have taken their place within the fellowship. We as a church have been enriched by God's gift to us from far away. And so the readings this morning will be both in English, which is their adopted language, and also in Farsi, which is their own language. We hear from Hadis and Anis. This is Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. The birth of Jesus. At that time, the emperor Augustus ordered a census to be, ta to be taken throughout the Roman Empire. When this first census took place, Quirinius was the governor of Syria. Everyone then went to register himself, each to his own town. Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to the town of Bethlehem in Judea, the birthplace of King David. Joseph went there because he was a descendant of David. He went to register with Mary, who was promised in marriage to him. She was pregnant, and while they were in Bethlehem, the time came for her to have her baby. She gave birth to her first son, wrapped him in stripes of cloth, and laid him in a manger. There was no room for them to stay in, in the inn. انجیل لقا بخش دوم آیه یک تا هم میلاد ایسا مسیح در آن روزها آگوستوس قیصر فرمانی صادر کرد تا مردمان جهان همگی سرشماری شوند این نخستین سرشماری بود و در ایام فرمانداری کورینیوس بر سوریه انجام می شد. پس هر کس روانه شهر خود شد تا نام نویسی شود. یوسف نیز از شهر ناصره جلیل رهسپار بتلهم یهودی زادگاه داوود شد زیرا از نصف و خاندان داوود بود. او به آنجا رفت تا با نامزدش مریم که زایمانش نزدیک بود نام نویسی کنند. هنگامی که آنجا بودند وقت زایمان مریم فرا رسید و نخستین فرزندش را که پسر بود به دنیا آورد. او را در قنداقی پیچید و در آخوری خوابانید زیرا در مهماسرا جایی برایشان نبود.
The second reading, verses 8 to 20. There were um, some shepherds in that part of the country who were spending the night in the fields, taking care of their flocks. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone over them. They were terribly afraid. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. I am here with good news for you, which will bring great joy to all the people. This very day in David's town, your Savior was born, Christ the Lord, and this is what will prove it to you. You will find a baby wrapped in stripes of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great army of heaven's angels appeared with the angel, singing praises to God. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them back into heaven, the shepherds said to, uh, to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has, to has told us. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph, and saw the baby lying in a manger. When the shepherds saw him, they told them what the angel had said about the child. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said. Mary remembered all these things and thought deeply about them. The shepherds went back, singing praises to God for all they had heard and seen. It had been just as angel had told them. انجیل لغا آیه 8 تا 20 شبانان و فرشتگان در آن نواحی شبانانی بودند که در صحرا به سر می بردند و شب هنگام از گله خود پاسداری می کردند ناگاه فرشته خداوند بر آنان ظاهر شد و نور جلال خداوند بر گردشان تابید شبانان سخت وحشت کردند اما فرشته به آنان گفت نترسید زیرا بشارتی برایتان دارم خبری بس شادی بخش که برای تمامی قوم است امروز در شهر داوود نجات دهنده ای برای شما به دنیا آمد او خداوند مسیح است نشانه برای شما این است که نوزادی را در گنداقی پیچیده و در آخوری خوابیده خواهید یافت ناگاه گروهی عظیم از لشکریان آسمان ظاهر شدند که همراه آن فرشته در ستایش خدا میگفتند جلال بر خدا در عرش برین و صلح و سلامت بر مردمانی که بر زمین مورد لطف اویند و چون فرشتگان از نزد ایشان به آسمان رفتند شبانان به یکدیگر گفتند بیایید به بیت لحم برویم و آنچه را روی داده و خداوند ما را از آن آگاه کرده است ببینیم پس به شتاب رفتند و مریم و یوسف و نوزاد خفته را در آخور یافتند چون نوزاد را دیدند سخنی را که درباره او به ایشان گفته شده بود پخش کردند و هر چه و هر که میشنید از سخن شبانان در شگفت میشد اما مریم این همه را به خاطر می سپود و در دل خود با آنها می اندیشید. پس شبانان خدا را هم و سناگویان بازگشتند به سبب هر آنچه دیده و شنیده بودند چنانچه به دیشان گفته شده بود. Now we listen to the carol, O little town of Bethlehem.
It's Christmas. What do we make of it this year? Well, it was in January of this year that I saw an advertisement. It was in Brent Cross, which is our local shopping centre here in northwest London, and they were looking for individuals who would serve as volunteers to be substitute Father Christmases in the grotto during the upcoming Christmas season. And as someone who was thinking about what I might do when I retire, this seemed an opportunity to prepare myself. So I made inquiries. And they said, well, we're advertising now, 11 months early, because you have to get ready. You have to be fat enough, and you have to grow your hair, and you have to have a white beard. And if you can manage all of that, then we'll consider you for the post. So I did all of that. And in October, they began to have interviews. And I went for my interview, and everything was fine. And I was really looking forward to taking my place on the rotor as a substitute Santa. And then lockdown came again, and my hopes were dashed. So it may be that I've got to get even fatter for next year, grow my hair even longer, and grow an even longer beard, and maybe December 2021 will give me my chance to fulfill my dream and become Santa, at least for a while. And if you believe that, you believe anything. The Christmas message the angels brought to the shepherds, a saviour who is Christ the Lord. What does it mean to talk of a saviour? What does that word mean? Well, we have to use analogies drawn from life, and analogies are not always perfect. They always fall down somewhere along the line. But I share with you one particular analogy which is helpful at least. There is, in a sense, we have been saved. We are being saved. We will be safe. So imagine if you were on a ship sailing across the ocean and all of a sudden the sirens sound, the ship is about to sink. What are you going to do? You need to get into a lifeboat. You get into a lifeboat and you find yourself sailing across the water as behind you the ship you were on sinks beneath the waves. But it's not over yet because it's not an easy journey in a lifeboat on a wide open ocean. You won't be completely safe until you arrive on dry land. If you'd stayed on the ship and it sank, you would have been lost forever. But an opportunity was provided to get into a lifeboat and be delivered from that awful prospect. Now, I believe that such is the sovereign grace of God that, to use that analogy, there's room in the lifeboats for everyone. Furthermore, God would not let the ship sink until everyone has gotten into the lifeboat. There is a sense in which all of us are bobbing around in an ocean of life, sailing to a future destiny we know not what it might contain, that place where we will be safe forever. And Jesus comes to us from God to be for us a saviour, to remind us that without him, we will be lost. We will be on a road to nowhere. We will be bound up in self-centeredness. But with him, there is the possibility of being rescued, delivered, set free from the shackles of selfishness, an opportunity to sail away on an ocean of life accompanied by him. And he holds out the prospect that one day we will find ourselves safe in God's presence on dry land, as it were. He will save his people from their sins a saviour 
who is Christ the Lord. There is something of a parallel with what is happening around us at present. We're all delighted that the scientific community has brought to the table a vaccine which may well immunize us all from the prospect of catching COVID-19. Sadly, that vaccine has come too late for many. Many lives have been lost during this year and we pause to remember with sadness those whom we have known who have succumbed to it during this year. But there is the opportunity now to be vaccinated, to be saved from the most awful consequences. But we can't be sure that even though we might be vaccinated, that we're completely safe. We have to wait for it to prove itself amongst us, and that will take time. And so we have to remain disciplined in the coming months. But hopefully there will be a time during this coming year when we will know ourselves completely safe, delivered from its consequences. That should resonate with us all, but Christmas takes us beyond that immediate context. Christmas says to us, there was born in Bethlehem all those years ago, one who is for us a saviour, Christ the Lord one who is saving us from the consequences of ourselves, delivering us into a life that we never otherwise imagined we could have, taking us to a place we hitherto didn't know exist, life in the presence of God. That should cheer us, regardless of all that is happening around us. So, from someone who might have been Father Christmas this year, who might have found himself saying, ho, 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 to you all, a very Merry Christmas. And may you discover for yourself the Saviour who is Christ the Lord.
we pray together. And we remember before God all those whom we love, all those who love us, all those with whom we share life, family and friends, neighbors, colleagues, whether they be close by or far away, we pray for them, we commend them to God's safekeeping and pray God's blessing upon them on this particular day. We remember before God those for whom today is a very busy day. We think especially of those working in our hospitals, hospitals which would ordinarily be quiet at Christmas, but which today are as full as ever. For the staff who have had to give up their Christmas to care for the many who need their help at this time. For others too, for whom this is another working day, we thank you for them, their willingness to serve, that we might enjoy what we enjoy. We thank you for the gift of children. For the wide-eyed, as presents are opened, gifts shared. That sense of innocence abroad. For family life. Whilst being mindful of those for whom Family life is no more. We think of those for whom this Christmas will be a difficult time, separated from loved ones. But most of all, O oh God, we pray for ourselves. We are bound to confess that this has not been easy for us dealing with all that is happening around us. There are times, perhaps even now, when we feel a heavy weight upon our shoulders. We feel burdened, weighed down by it all. May we embrace in our hearts the gift of one who is a saviour, Christ the Lord, reminding us that we have been saved we are being saved, we will be safe, and all because of what he has accomplished on our behalf. For this Jesus, we give you thanks, O God. Amen. In a moment, we're going to share the last of our carols. You've met a few different people this morning. Um, there's one last person I want you to meet. Um, he's a person you've not seen because he's always sat behind the cameras. But I'm going to ask Tony if he'd come and stand in front of the camera just for a moment. This is the genius who makes all of this happen. So, Tony, give them all a big wave. Happy Christmas, everyone. Thanks, Tony. Those who are prepared to put their gifts and talents to use in the life of the church, we are grateful. We hear the last of our carols. O come, all ye faithful.
After the blessing, we will hear the organist play us out. But perhaps it would be good, Peter, if you could stand up and give a wave on the camera. Happy Christmas. Thanks, Peter. And those words go to all of you, wherever you might be. Let the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest and remain with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>